Rwanda is one of several countries at the center of the Pegasus spyware scandal. Its government is accused of using the technology to surveil thousands of journalists, human rights activists and political dissidents. And in Kigali, there is perhaps no opposition figure quite so prominent as Paul Rusesa, being, uh, Rusesa Bagina. The man who inspired the film Hotel Rwanda was arrested last August on terrorism charges. He's been in detention since then. And recent investigations say the Rwandan government has been using Pegasus spyware to target his daughter, Karine Kanimba. She says it's because of her work to try and free her father. Rwandan authorities and NSO, the Israeli firm who created Pegasus, both deny those allegations. Time now for the exchange where we explain why the Rusesa Bagina family's experience is relevant to democracies everywhere. We've got Karine Kanimba joining us now herself. Karine, thank you very much uh, for taking the time. When Amnesty International called you with uh, evidence with regards to their investigation into Pegasus, um, what I know is that you've already told CNN is that you had suspected for quite some time that the Rwandan government in some way was tracking you or listening in on your conversations. How specific were, were the, the findings and the evidence um, that Amnesty International brought to you? So the forensics team at Amnesty International Security Lab um, figured out that throughout the duration of the past, since January uh, of 2021, they, and the Rwandan government, I mean, there's an infection in my phone, a Pegasus infection. And the findings of the report show that at times where I was meeting with the foreign minister of Belgium, the Belgian foreign minister, Sophie Wilmes, or when I had calls with uh, members of the U.S. government, the State Department, and other government officials ac across the world, um, they were being uh, monitored and surveilled. And this is with time precisions from the forensic report. That's incredible. I mean, what was your reaction to this uh, when you heard the evidence um, and, and it was clear as daylight? Because you'd also been telling us that it actually compromised a lot of the efforts that you had been doing at the time to try and free your father? Yes, um, it's frightening, to be frank. It's very scary to know that they have been following my every move. I mean, we've also figured out that they've reached out to members of the Belgian government that I had been in touch with, asking them to, to help us put enough pressure on President Kagame to release my father. Um, it's frightening, but uh, again, we're, we, our work, what we're trying to do, my family and my team, is trying to do everything possible to bring my father home, to advocate for his rights, for his human rights, and especially his rights to defense, which have been violated from the moment he was kidnapped to Rwanda. And now this, mm -hmm. the fact that we've discovered Pegasus in my phone, um, shows that they've continued to violate our rights to privacy, his rights to defense, because they were monitoring the conversations I've had with my father's lawyers and our entire team. So we will not be intimidated. We will continue to advocate for him and defend him until we can bring him home. Um, but it's very, very frightening. So, Corinne, very important. <laughs> the London government has denied using Pegasus spyware. Um, what is your reaction to that statement? There is plenty of evidence pointing the fingers towards pointing um, fingers towards Rwanda. Not only in the Amnesty International report, um, they also point out that three different governments have confirmed that Rwanda that they know that Rwanda uses Pegasus. Um, plenty of journalists, and including this forensics lab, have confirmed that um, that there were people on Rwanda's list, and so. I, there's no other government that, want, that wants to go after me. There is only one government that kidnapped my father, that tortured my father, and that deprived him of his legal rights. And it can only be Rwanda. And so we know who, who, um, who is behind this. Yeah. So, Karine, the last time you were on the show, you were detailing the five-minute conversation that you are able to have only on a weekly basis with your father. And you described that he wasn't able to speak freely and tell you exactly what was going on. Has anything changed? 
No, the the situation remains the same. We have very short calls with him, um, and we cherish those few minutes every single day. But we are very worried for his life. We're worried for what they do to him. Um, we've already been uh, uh, published reports of the torture that he was inflicted with upon his arrival in Rwanda, and his rights continue to be violated, as we know until today. And so, um, no, things have not improved. But uh, but we will not stop. Whether they are listening to it, to us, watching us through this Pegasus, we will continue to advocate for my father's rights. So um, your father hasn't been attending the trial. Um, we know that he has local lawyers, Rwandese lawyers in the country. You have been lobbying to try and get international lawyers to assist, keeping in mind here that uh, your father is not only uh, a resident of the United States, but also a citizen of Belgium as well. How has that scenario been working out if he's not in trial and he is not able to actually speak his mind, does that not put um, the whole process in jeopardy? Yes. So we, uh, my father, we have a team of international lawyers, um, including two Rwandan lawyers, but their entire team has been denied access to Rwanda. They've been denied the, the right to represent my father. And so this goes, this proves again once more that, um, that my father's rights continue to be violated. The fact that they're refusing um, his rights to representation by the international lawyers that we have, his team of international lawyers, shows that they are, in fact, they in fact know that the charges against him are completely invented. And to go even further as it relates to Pegasus, um, unless all states continue to stand up and condemn and criticize extrajudicial kidnapping and uh, torture and illegal surveillance, then their own citizens will be at risk. And my father's case is a perfect example of how if things if things continue in this direction, everyone and it can happen to anyone as well. And that's exactly why we're we will not stop advocating for so, him. So Karine You've been, you've been, Karine. You've been very vocal about the fact that you believe that this isn't a fair trial, um, and you've obviously stated your case quite strongly to the international community. Are you receiving support at this point in time? Do you believe the U.S. and Belgium authorities are going to step up because sentencing is set for 20 August? Yes, so they've announced the verdict date for the August 20th, but it, this verdict date and the, does not mean anything to us because my father's rights have been violated. And in fact, throughout the duration of the, the sham trial, every co-accused, I mean, the prosecutors first have provided no evidence against my father, and the co-accused have actually stepped forward to say that my father was not involved in any of these attacks that the Rwandan government wants to charge him with. Um, so in terms of continuing to, to, to rally the support of the Belgian government and the U.S. government, including uh, because my father is both a Belgian citizen and an American resident, uh, we will continue. And we do believe that the, this, everything that's happened with Pegasus and everything that we have exposed throughout the past eight months that shows how every single one of his rights, including the food that he gets, are being, um, are being uh, limited, then um, we hope that they will find it within their hearts to step up against the Rwandan dictatorship and ask for my father's immediate release. Kareen, thank you very much for sharing that story with us. Much appreciated.